Bermuda Broadcasting Company is pleased to present the 2018 FIFA World Cup from Russia, June 14th to July 15th. This will mark the 21st FIFA World Cup featuring 32 national teams, covering 64 matches, played in 12 venues located in 11 cities. The final will be held July 15th in Moscow. Be a part of the history. You don't want to miss FIFA World Cup 2018. Purdue Fresh Value Pack Chicken Thighs with Drumsticks, only $1.99 per pound. Golden Ripe Pineapples, just $5.99 each, saving you $2. For your Hot Cross Buns, Champion Seedless Raisins, only $3.39 for a 12-ounce box. Kraft Shredded Cheese, $3.89 for an 8-ounce package. For your Easter Mac and Cheese, Catelli Macaroni, only $1.79 for a 500-gram box. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. You can count on us. Live. From Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. You're watching Bermuda Broadcasting News. It's Wednesday, the 28th of March, and I'm Diane Brewer. Thank you for joining us tonight. New plans to transform the troubled Grand Atlantic development were unveiled today with the aim of turning it into one of the island's leading resorts within the next two years. The Minister of Public Works, Lieutenant Colonel David Birch, said the move will enable the Bermuda Housing Corporation to clear its debt on the property, allowing it to focus on its mandate of providing housing for Bermudians. Colonel Birch said the project negotiations, which began under the OBA administration, would enhance the island's tourism product. The proposed condominium development is seen to provide the best value for money and was most closely aligned with the government's goals for increasing tourism accommodations. The Bermudiana Beach Resort team is led by resort specialist Robert McClellan of McClellan and Associates Successful Bidders of the RFP process. This process was obviously started under the former administration, but has been the subject of extensive negotiations over the past seven months to produce a modified business plan that provides greater financial benefit for the Bermuda Housing Corporation in a co-developer arrangement and allows for more cost-efficient project financing. The project involves the conversion of the existing 78 two- and three-bedroom condominiums into a full-service condo hotel with resort leisure amenities at a cost in the region of $23 million. And among the amenities to be included in the project are two swimming pools, a spa, elevators in most of the condominium blocks, and lifts to move guests to and from the beach below. And the minister explained there will be restrictions on the use of the condo units. The condominiums will be marketed at as deeded vacation homes on an outright sale basis to individual owners. However, owner usage by condominium buyers is restricted to a maximum of 90 nights per year, with the balance of the nights available for use as hotel inventory under a mandatory rental program contract, which shares income between individual owners and the resort operating company. Almost 50% of the condominiums will be modified to include lock-off and suite bedrooms and thus increase the number of suites and rooms available for hotel accommodations to 105. Negotiations are currently being finalized to operate the resort under an international hotel branded franchise which will provide worldwide marketing and reservation systems. It is anticipated that the conversion works will be undertaken during 2018 and 2019, with an anticipated opening date for the resort of April 2020. Last year, Craig Christensen described the Ritz-Carlton development at Morgan's Point as the catalyst to Bermuda's comeback. Fast forward and he and fellow development board member Nelson Hunt have stepped down as the project stalls and costs outpace financing. They have been replaced by Andy Burroughs of the BTA and Nancy Dupro, the wife of board chair Brian Dupro. A spokesperson said the firm is working to strengthen and extend the project's financing. One of the backers is the Bermuda government, which has a 160 
$65 million loan guarantee. Premier David Byrd says Georgia's Bay has had difficulties with certain requirements of that loan guarantee since last June. Some 150 workers have reportedly been impacted, including those working for Caesa. The company's managing director, Charles Dunstan, said despite the halt, he doesn't think it's indicative of a sector slowdown. Uh, had a guy start yesterday and then at the end of the day had to unfortunately hand him a, a layoff notice. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that the industry is still quite busy. Um, we are feverishly right now trying to redeploy some of these people. Um, we have jobs on the, on the board that um, we can't get to at the moment, which is good, um, a good problem to have. Um, and, and so hopefully in short order we're going to be able to redeploy some of these people to, to get the moving on these other jobs. And we'll have more for you after this short break, including important news if you're planning on entering a float in this year's Bermuda Day celebration. Stay with us. You can count on us. Red potatoes, just $4.49 for a five-pound bag. Don't forget your codfish for your fish cakes, only $5.99 for a 16-ounce package. Great for Easter Sunday, stovetop stuffing, just $2.89 for a six-ounce box. Great price, carnation evaporated milk, only 99 cents for a 410-gram tin. Robin Hood flour for your Easter baking, just $3.45 for a five-pound or 2.5-kilogram bag. Have a safe Good Friday and Happy Easter from the Marketplace. You can count on us. Jane just got diagnosed with dementia. Her doctor recommended home care service. Jane chose Bermuda in home care. A full home care service with certified dementia care specialists available 24-7. Jane and her family was extremely happy when the caregiver showed up on time. The caregiver prepared her meals, reminded her to take medication, helped her with personal hygiene care, and solved puzzles with her. The family chooses Lighthouse Medical Supplies to set up all her durable medical equipments. Call Bermuda In-Home Care, 705-4424. Your one-stop shop for all your home care services and medical supplies. Taking the hassle out of health care, call now, 705-4424. Welcome back. Around 60 members of Age Concern took advantage of free health screenings at the Chubb Building in Hamilton today. The seniors' charity says events like these are particularly important in Bermuda, which has a large number of elderly people, many of whom who suffer from chronic Ill illnesses. Arthur I. Trot was there. Eye screenings, blood sugar testing, blood pressure checks, all for seniors and all for free at the Chubb's Building in Woodbourne Avenue. Organizing all of this was the singer's charity, Age Concern. Dr. Claudette Fleming is its executive director. We want to do our part um, very meaningfully in the fight against uh, chronic disease. Um, we have many wonderful health partners in the community all year round, providing fairs, checks, um, private individuals, providing discounts and concessions. Um, but yet we have seniors who still feel as though they don't have access. The health checks aren't meant to be an end-all be-all, but a chance for the charity to record crucial data and to refer their members to other services in the community that may be able to help them on a higher level. But mostly we want to make sure that um, our actions fall in line with um, where Bermuda is going. There to show support on behalf of the government was Kim Wilson, the Minister of Health. As the um, Ministry of Health, our slogan, so to speak, is healthy people and healthy communities. So whenever we see community partners pull together their resources, their talent and their time to put on initiatives such as this that are helping to um, uh, impact positively in a positive way our health care persons, whether it be through screenings such as you're seeing, eye screenings, blood pressure and the like, then we have to support such initiatives because we, it takes a community. The intent is to develop a community that thinks health first and a healthier lifestyle. Things like this will help to um, discuss that aspect, but at the same time we do recognize that with uh, in high incidence of non-communicable diseases, when we have in initiatives like this, it helps under people understand that they may have high blood pressure, they may be walking around with a um, uh, a, a medical condition that can be better diagnosed here. Why did Chubbs choose to get involved so early? Absolutely. Uh, part of Chubbs global philanthropic um, mandate is to get involved in our communities in the areas of, of health and education as a part of it. Butterfield, what brought you out here today? 
my friend, she signed me up for this, which I'm very glad she did. Because you take your blood pressure, you even have a little chance to talk to the dental and your health, food and whatever. It's very interesting. And no cost. Very much free. So I advise anybody, age concern, come out next time. And of course, that was Tarai Trot reporting there. If you and your friends are hoping to get a float together for this year's Bermuda Day Parade, then you better get your application ready. The government has announced that applications to join the parade will close on April the 20th. This theme is what we share, and one thing we'll all be sharing this year is a three-day weekend with Bermuda Day now permanently moved to the last day and Friday. Acting Minister Levita Fogo spoke to reporters earlier about the celebrations. The public will know that Bermuda Day takes place during May Heritage Month. This year the theme for Heritage Month is what we share. Bermuda has so much to celebrate as a country and as a people from sporting heroes to cultural icons from enviable climate to picturesque beaches and landscape and we are arguably the friendliest people on earth no doubt. Over the last few years, the Department of Community and Cultural Affairs has successfully introduced new participant categories in order to widen community involvement. Natural heritage floats, traditional Bermuda Day floats with natural materials, upcycled floats using recycled materials or used items destined for the trash, art floats using art, sculpture, or other modes of creative expression. Music truck entry, walking group entry. Bermuda Day Parade application forms are due in by Friday, April 20th, 2018. And because of the upcoming Good Friday holiday, garbage due to be collected this Friday will instead be collected the next day on Saturday, the 31st. And if you lived in the East End, you've missed your chance to get rid of your recycling that was collected today. But recycling collection in the West End will take place tomorrow. Well, still to come, all the latest weather news and how cybercrime could affect you. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Bermuda's only fiber to the home network is here, thanks to Digicel. But what does this mean? Fiber to the home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digicel's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. This means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway. You can be one of the first to enjoy it. Call us on 505,000. Hey Bermuda, I want to thank you for welcoming me onto your beautiful island last year. Not only did you completely sell out the shows, but your love, passion, and excitement have inspired me. So much in fact that I'm creating an all new show right now as we speak. And I thought what better place to debut my all new illusions than the incredible island of Bermuda. So my friends, it's official. I'm coming back. One Communications presents, presents, presents Razor Returns with an all-new show at the Fairmont Southampton Hotel, May 11th, 12th, and on Sunday the 13th. So come on out to witness some of the biggest illusions the world has ever seen. This event is high-energy, state-of-the-art entertainment. This is a family-friendly event. Tickets sold at Audiovisual Hamilton and Somerset. Paramount Southampton and online at ptix.bm. This event is sponsored in part by exclusive events to Sarah's family of service stations, photogenic photography, and exclusive flowers. Tickets are disappearing fast, so get yours today. Welcome back. Credit reporting firm Equifax has a new CEO. Mark Beggar is taking over the scandal hit company, which last year was at the center of one of the biggest and most sensitive data breaches of all time. Information on nearly 150 million Americans was exposed, including social security numbers. So in an increasingly digital world, Tony Waterman tries to find out how prepared Bermuda businesses are for a cyber hack. Everyone knows they should be doing it. Sometimes it seems like everyone is doing it. 
But the reality is, a lot is slipping through the cracks. The biggest cyber attack of all time. It affects 143 million people. Social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, credit cards. Data card protection. You might be doing a good job at home, but a recent report by Bermuda-based insurer Hiscox showed companies have work to do. Almost half of companies we spoke to had suffered a cyber incident in the last 12 months, and actually 30% of companies had been attacked more than once. So it goes to show that lightning does strike twice in the cyber world. The Hiscox Cyber Readiness Report focused on 4,000 companies spread across five countries. Now, Bermuda isn't on this list, but it does have close business ties to the U.S. and the U.K. And in a hyper-connected, digitized world, no one is safe. Your data could be hosted many miles away from where you actually operate and trade. And if, if that data center suffers downtime or is breached, that can have a knock-on effect to um, organizations in, in Bermuda and, and further afield. Last year's hack of Appleby Law Firm highlighted the reputational risk of sensitive data being stolen. Too many stories like that could spell disaster for any jurisdiction. There are some companies in Bermuda which are not secure. I mean, that's the truth. Ronnie Vieira chairs the Cybersecurity Working Group, a government initiative to beef up the island's digital defenses. He says big organizations like banks or insurance companies tend to be more prepared than others. But adopting a cyber culture is a good start for any business. Security awareness training amongst employees is important because, you know, employees are, can be the weakest link. Um, I, too have um, almost clicked on, it, on an email that I shouldn't have clicked on. And because the phishing attacks and things are becoming so, more, so much more sophisticated. New legislation dealing with cybercrime could also help. The current law is 22 years old. Redrafting that relic is one of Vieira's top priorities. In the meantime, the newly legislated Personal Information Protection Act could plug some holes. Based on common sense principles like fairness and transparency, um, and letting people know what you're going to do with their data, how long you're going to, how you're going to look, how you're going to um, look after it, who you're going to share it with, and so on and so forth. All companies that collect personal information must be compliant with PIPA, which is meant to kick in this year. If they're not, and data is stolen or lost, they face a fine up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or imprisonment. There's a need to demonstrate that they are, in fact, you know, of consequence, and that it's being taken seriously. You can't have any privacy if you don't have proper security um, in, in, in the IT world. It's also the case in the rest of the world. Tony Waterman for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Turning to weather now and the forecast for the holiday weekend looks very positive. Here are the details from the good people of AccuWeather. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer. Hopefully you've had a great day, a little bit breezy outside, also a little bit cooler than what we're used to for this time of year. But things do get better over the next couple of days. We continue to watch the storm system pull away, and high pressure is going to be building in, so we do have some pleasant weather ahead of us. We have that cold front still showing up here uh, on the radar off to our east, so looks like we're going to be staying on the dry side for the next couple of days, so no significant weather events we have to worry about. No big storms coming off the East Coast, just the one that's moving out now, and that's the one that has been generating some rough conditions out on the water, which are still a little bit rough as we head into tonight, but some improvements are on the way. Temperatures right now across the island, we are sitting in the low 60s. Humidity currently at 62 percent. A little bit breezy outside with winds coming in out of the north and west, and that's help usher, uh, helping usher in that cooler air that we've been feeling today. Temperatures running about five or so degrees below normal. 10 to 15 knots with the winds, the water 65 degrees and waves outside of the reef. That's where we're running into the really choppy conditions right now between 6 and 12 feet. But that will be improving over the next couple of days and especially as we get closer to the weekend. So for tonight we're calling it Partly cloudy here, a few patchy clouds. 62 degrees for the overnight low and yes the water still choppy. So the National Weather Service Office or the Weather Service Office still has a small craft warning through tonight. So uh, make sure you're staying safe 
if you plan on venturing out toward the water. Here's your tidal times. High tide 1 coming in at 7.09 p.m. High tide uh, coming in tomorrow. High tide 1 uh, right around 7.40 in the morning. And for tomorrow, temperature-wise, we are going to be a little bit better. Clouds and sunshine, a high of 68 degrees. That's exactly where we should be for this time of the year. A nice dry day. And, hey, we can use some dry times. Over the last 30 days, we've seen nearly 8 inches of rain, and we're actually running slightly above normal for rain for the entire year so far. So let's look at what's to come. Over the next couple of days, here's that storm system I mentioned that's going to be pulling away. High pressure starts to build in, and the only weather maker that we have to be concerned about, and it's really not a big concern this weekend, a cold front will be approaching by the time we head into Saturday. Saturday night, that might bring in a brief shower. Otherwise, the weather is looking A-OK. -okay. Not so much on the East Coast here. Some rain in Toronto and New York tomorrow. Temperatures are running above average in parts of the Northeast. Meantime, some of our islands here, Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad, temperatures are warm and toasty in the mid to upper 80s. And our temperatures are going to be pretty pleasant here as we head into the weekend. Again, Saturday night, we could see a brief shower around, but for Easter Sunday, should be a pleasant one with your friends and family. High pressure in the temperatures in the upper 60s. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. Sears is Bermuda's largest home appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service, and everyday low prices. Are you looking to expand your customer base, increase sales, and be a part of the Island Community Events for 2018? Bermuda Broadcasting Company can make that happen. Be a part of World Cup 2018, Bermuda Day Half Marathon, Bermuda Heroes Weekend, Cup Match Classic, and Eastern Counties Cricket. Inquire about our new advertising opportunities, whether big or small. We will deliver. Come and see us at Fort Hill, Devonshire, or email us at sales at bbc.pm, or send us a message on Facebook at Bermuda Broadcasting. Welcome back. Sports news now and a bronze medal for a figure skater from Bermuda in World Championships. Earl Bazden has that story and much more in tonight's sports report. Vanessa James and her partner Morgan Cypress represented France at the 2018 World Figure Skating Championships in Italy, collecting the bronze medal. James and Cypress recorded a score of 218.36 points with Germany's Aljona Shevchenko and Bruno Masset winning the event with a score of 245.84 points, while Avgina Terezova and Vladimir Morozov from Russia finished in second. In the short program, James and Cypress recorded a score of 36.09. Then in the free skating program, the pair had a score of 143.04. ZBM Sports can reveal that CONCACAF held its official draw for the CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Qualifiers yesterday. Bermuda have been drawn in Group E alongside host Guyana, Barbados and Suriname. Meanwhile, Nathan Trott and his England under-20 teammates' dazzling form continued as they picked up a second victory in a week with a comfortable 3-0 victory over Portugal at Manchester City's Academy Stadium. It would be Trott's second 90-minute shutout in a row. Delray Rollins and his Maribor Cricket Club MCC teammates took to the field against Essex, who won the toss and elected to bat in a four-day champion county match at the Kensington Oval in Barbados. The match is being played as a day-night, with Rollins becoming the first Bermuda player to suit up for the MCC. Essex were comfortable at one point, sitting at 89 for two, but they lost eight wickets, scoring 98 runs in 31.2 overs to be all out for 187. Opener Nick Brown was their top score with 48, while Richard Gleason was the pick of the MCC bowlers with figures of 18 overs, 5 maidens, 5 for 50. In reply, at the close of play, MCC had reached 73 for 2. Rollins is scheduled to bat at number 6 behind Paul Collingwood. 
Paul Goodison of the UK took an early lead at the Bacardi Moth World Championships taking place in the Great Sound after winning the first two races. Goodison has two points with Brad Funk from the USA on six points in second place. Rome Kirby from the USA is in third with nine points. Christian Luthi is leading the Bermuda fleet and is in 30th place with 73 points, while Nathan Bailey is in 31st with 74 points. This coming Saturday is the deadline for the Bermuda Breeze USTA Championships, which will take place at the Coral Beach and Tennis Club in April. David Thomas, who is the number two ranked player in Bermuda, he also works for the Bermuda Tourism Authority and is a member of the Bermuda Lawn Tennis Association, is hoping this will be a success. Well, from a tourism standpoint, uh, sports tourism has been really, really big for us over the last few years. And we see this as another opportunity to, to get people to Bermuda and join the product that we have on offer. Um, as many will know, uh, we used to have the Axile Open over at Coral Beach, and that hasn't happened for at least a decade. Um, so this tournament doesn't fill that void, but we're getting people, hopefully affluential people, coming to the island, experiencing the product, and enjoying all that Bermuda has to offer. Thomas is also hoping that locals get involved. I would hope and imagine that everyone's looking to jump on board with this. It's not very often that we have tournaments in general uh, for locals, and to have a USTA event on the island, it gives another dynamic for not just people my age, but it's, it's an age category tournament, so people that don't normally get to play tennis to get out there and, and experience competition against locals and those from away. Walker Campbell and his William & Mary's men's golf teammates fired a combined 27 over par 307, taking a stroke off their first round score and sit at 55 over par 615 and are in 19th place after two rounds of the Kingsmill Intercollegiate Golf Tournament. Campbell recorded one birdie, nine par, seven boogies and one double boogie in his round to finish the day tied 68 at 13 over par. Kirsten Soltis and her Katawa women's tennis teammates went down in a South Atlantic Conference tennis match to host Tusculum at the Nicholas Tennis Complex. Tusculum picked up a 9-0 win, but they did not have it all their way. Soltis forced a tiebreak in her pro set at number 6 before falling 8-7, 7-2 in the tiebreaker. In Commercial League bowling action at the Ward Lane, they saw Sweet Life defeat BTC 4-0. The Superstars defeated the Pin Pushers 4-0, while the Spinners got by the Braves 4-0. The Secret Weapons defeated the Ten Pin Mafia 4-0, while We Do It Big defeated the BPS Blue Lanterns 3-1. Cool Runnins would defeat the Sunset 3-1. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Thanks, Earl. Well, a new exhibition showing the work of five students from Bermuda High School has opened at the Masterworks Gallery. The gallery's director, Tom Butterfield, says the art on display is among the finest produced by students that he's ever seen, and he's urging people to come to the free exhibition. Hal Davis took him up on his invitation. You and I see why. You and I see why. That's a unity. You this isn't a show of pretty rural views and seashores but one that deals with many of the most pressing issues facing young people in Bermuda. Among them, questions of race and identity, perhaps best seen in Cyan Simmons's portraits. Throughout my art course, I've seen a lot of artists in history who haven't shown African or black faces in positive lights. Like, it's, it just, it feels like it almost needed to be done in some cases. It's my way of saying thank you to people of color in my life who show me the beauty in being black or being of a different color. The photographs of Nairi Burgess are an examination of the stages of depression, from social isolation all the way to contemplating suicide. She says her work is not a personal reflection, but rather an attempt to get people to recognise their own emotions. Personally, I feel as if um, people cannot express how they feel, so within, when you come to the exhibition and you look at my work, I... My goal is to have the viewer look and say, oh yeah, I can feel like that. That's my emotion, that's how I exactly feel. That's not to say there aren't images that celebrate beauty, especially in the work of Julia Cox. But as the director of Masterworks, Tom Butterfield, says, the predominant tone is one of young people struggling to come to terms with a difficult world, one they didn't make. The big theme to me probably are, are the, the issues that confront us in the, 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 the sadnesses of the world. Um, and so many, uh, what I see in the artwork is a, a little of what I would call on the dark side of things. In many cases what you do see is this sense of, of a confused world around them. 
One way to cope with such confusion is perhaps by making art, this striking image by Andrea Wilson. What is clear is that all the artists have enjoyed the process of making these works, ranging from collages to oil paintings to installations, a range they say encouraged by their school. I think that they always encourage us to go out of our comfort zone and to try new things all the time. Um, and I think a lot of our works here are examples of that. Um, and also, they encourage us to keep developing our skills. And I think um, we can definitely see development in our collections. So what does their teacher make of their striking work? She says while these teenagers deal with complex subjects, there's always an element of self-examination. A lot of them have looked at symbolism and the use of metaphor um, in sort of conveying something about kind of self or a, a subject that's another person. But often, even when it's presented as another person, I'd say that the connotations are, are usually quite personal to the artist. Visitors to the gallery will have the chance to see the works for three more weeks, with the exhibition ending on April the 18th. A chance to see a display that Tom Butterfield says compares with any work by students he's seen in Washington, New York or London. Howell Davis, Bermuda Broadcasting News. Beautiful works. That's our newscast this Wednesday evening. I'm Diane Brewer and I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Good night, Bermuda.